Alrighty here. New version, there is no sound. Oh. <laughs> In his nuts. Oh, that's pa pa pa. It'd be awesome, actually. You're saying here that the uh, yellow dude will be animated as well. <laughs> he doesn't need much animation. It'd be kind of funny. Nothing much. Just reacting. Like, just hit the hits. So you feel like slight impacts and vibrations. But just not at the end, it'll head goes down like, really or a slight side. What are you doing? But anyway, this is cool. I like it. Okay, let me just check something. Okay, that's cool. Just because I, I talk about this to my students a lot. And your work is really good. I'm not like I'm not saying you're a student that needs a lot of help, but it's very common that on something like this, the character is wanting to go this way. So this leg has to be grounded here, and that's the direction, right? And the more the more you push, the more you're able to go this way. If that makes sense. I'm sure it makes sense to you, but right? You get to this, to that, to that, hopefully. And that's what allows the uh, the root to push. Oftentimes, with students, what they do is they move the root this way, but the foot is already up in the air. So by something like that, it might already have a pose where it's up like that, whatever pose it is, right? But then the thing is, if that's the ground, it's already off the air and it would fall this way. There's no way it can push this way if there's nothing on the ground contacting to push. Anyways, quick, quick thing. My only thing here in this pose... I know it's fast-ish. How are you going to this? It's just an awkward pose at one point where even though I know this is pointing this way and this is pointing this way, it's just an odd feel of almost feeling like we want to go this way and it feels like we're pointing this way and it's kind of pointing this way. They feel like it just feels slightly broken. So I'm wondering if instead of leaving it like that and having such a strong move here but not in the toes, if it could work, that the foot is actually pivoting off the toes so that by now it's actually the other way where it's already like this, right? And then you have uh, your knee and it's kind of, I'm not sure if you want to bring that knee already way down into something where it's more like that, if that makes sense. Like you're, you're pivoting off the toes this way to then at the end not be like this, but to be more like that and then you might have you know something like that as a pose that then leads into this as opposed to staying like that if that makes sense i think i would stabilize this and actually not go so high with the foot roll here just because there's a lot of movement in the foot roll and then it kind of locks and then it goes back down again and this in real time is a bit much and it feels like it's it's not doing a foot roll because the foot you know, or you know the leg is like that where it has it's over the foot and it needs to have that roll. This feels like the roll is independent of what the root is doing in terms of balance and pressure and why it's doing this. And you can see this because it stops doing a foot roll here, but we're still continuing this way, if that makes sense. It's just a it doesn't feel like it's needed mechanically, especially since you're gonna have pressure on there anyway soon. It's supposed to wobbly. Yeah, and also with, with the knee, you're getting this very strong move to the right, and then we're stopping, and then it continues on. So I think that could be all a bit simplified, and we'll also avoid that the kind of knee pop into that move here. Careful that we don't have this uh, let me go this way. Kind of the, uh, what's it called? It's kind of an IK lock on the arm right through there. I know it's not completely locking, but it feels like it's just you're going down into the space. It's somewhat locked before we suddenly move forward. So that's a pretty big spacing jump there. And even though this has a nice curve once we get to here it starts to feel kind of broken how high up that wrist is angled versus it being a bit more aligned with the forearm it's feeling a bit more comfortable there and then i would probably i would continue to go forward with the roots but there's also very strong we are moving forward 
and then we're kind of stopping. I mean, you might track that rotation there, but it has this really big move. You know what I mean? From here to here to here. And then it feels like we're just kind of locked. Then it continues forward. And to me, it's almost like you would push off. And there's nothing yet to stop that push off unless you want to count this leg. But it's I mean, the way the center of mass is here. Like you're pushing up this way. It's not enough angle this way to stop that. So to me, it feels like this route was going to continue until you're hitting this. And it's the contact here, the energy of this, that's going to stop it and almost make it go back a bit into this. So to me, it feels like instead of doing this, stop, forward again, and then back with a little bit of a wobble there, I would just go forward, continuous momentum into this move here, into going back. So continue forward into the back move here. That's kind of cool. I like that. That goes down here. Careful when we're bending a knee away from camera or to camera. Either way, it, you're starting to lose the length of it. Silhouette wise, it just starts to just become a shorter leg versus this, where we understand the structure. So when you have a bend like this or like that, we understand how long it is. And that is fairly. <laughs> What angle is this? Oh, you're just breaking the leg because of a fast move. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fast. You can get away with it. Look at the arms as well. Yeah, it's just, I would, smoothing out that roof uh, move there is going to also help you with, like, this has a very clear stop on that line here. You're just hitting this wall. And then the head has this sudden move down and then suddenly moving over. So it just it just all feels a bit wobbly through there. And I think that could be smoothed out a bit. And I will probably... It's a bit of an odd IK arm. We're moving the chest so much that the arm extends just because the wrist is almost locked into the space. So it doesn't feel like a drag extension. It feels more like... The IKEA controller just happened to stay here and now we're overextending the arm because of a controller mishap versus, oh, I want to drag that arm and make it feel like the chest is leading so quickly that that arm is bending and dragging. Probably here, I would move that arm higher to keep that foot, uh, to keep that um, the negative space in all of this. I wouldn't have an overlap here. Same thing here. It would be, if possible, I don't know how high you can go, just rotate that arm forward a bit without losing too much structure. And then also watch out again. We have a really strong pivot lock here on the elbow. Into that. Careful, we're getting into some tangents there. So I would free up that negative space between the chin and the and this. Like all of this, you could have your hand here. That's okay. Okay, it gets pretty fast here. I mean, I do like the timing. This is just for clarity. And then careful. A couple things here. There's there's still a lot of residual settled movement here in the chest while this is really locked here. Now, you're arguing, or you might argue, or someone, that, well, you're punching and you're putting pressure on it, but it it doesn't feel like there's pressure on it because if I look at this, it's so centered. I don't know why. I, know, I see it centered, but it has like, a, for me, a slight feel of off center back. But because it's so centered and not leaning forward, like if this foot was further back, imagine, right? And the root a bit more to the front and this leaning more, then it would feel like while they're leaning, I mean, not that you want to be like completely off balance here, but. Imagine you're you're leaning so far forward that it feels like, well, if this hand wasn't pushing against this character here, then the character would fall over. Then I would buy that you can have movement here and this is fairly locked. But because it doesn't feel like pose-wise and balance-wise that there is any pressure on this, it's just a held pose, I think you can afford to loosen this up a bit or change the pose, if that makes sense. Like this feels really, oh, I'm parented and almost locked to all of this despite 
this overall feel of leaning back. I know, I know it's center, but it just feels like mm, it's the pose is not quite supporting this. But I do like the little breathing. But it, it feels more, it feels slightly more like ambient movement. And then careful, I know you're moving everything back because you're bringing that arm back. The thing that's funky looking is that this leg is forward, this leg is back, but the hip is back and the other side is forward versus staying in this. This is a nice pose. So it's, to me, it's you want to bring this back and you might have to scoot this. Like, you know, as you go back here with that, it might slide back a bit. It's the only thing we're getting into a slight all look. But at the same time, boom, I also understand the, the crossover, right? Right leg forward, left arm forward. It just seems really exaggerated here, but it's also because we're so locked here. You can see that this midsection is locked and then this has a very separate kind of dislocated move. And if you're going for breathing, I would... Put in a bit more chest up down and shoulders up down this feels more like the arm is moving with a little bit of head stuff and a lot of leg here that almost feels like a drift see that yeah like a key here here ish to here that feels like in graph editor that feels like a linear linear curve there now in terms of this what's to me, slightly odd about this one, and you're asking too about like the acting at the end, is that it's such a held pose on toes with a massive foot roll. And again, it's it's not quite working to me with the locked area here because we're not leaning forward enough. But let's pretend this was a slightly different pose where we are actually really leaning forward and there's weight on this, right? The moment you let go, they would fall forward. So I can see why you might want to be more centered because once you let go, you got to be centered to not fall over. But the issue to me is that this is such an isolated move of bringing this arm back. I see ambient movement in here, but there's something about changing this. Like the stance is not wide. You know, like to me, it feels like th that's your, your left foot, foot roll, whatever. And then the other leg is like here, you know, like it's, that's the root. The feet are like this far apart from a camera from back here. It doesn't feel like just looking at the way this is posed that this is the root right leg is here. And then the other leg is here, but you know, like from the back view where it's, where it's more like a triangle stabilized pose. So to me, the moment you take this off, he feels wobbly, like he's going to fall over left or right, especially being on, on this here. And I think the other thing too is that character puts the arm away into like, eh, I guess I didn't do anything to you. Didn't nothing happen to you. But it's I would also move away. Like it's almost like, you know, the character is there towards the danger, the foe, the enemy, blah, blah, blah. And now it's like, okay, well, I didn't do anything. Eh. And because of that. It feels like you want to create distance between the still the, the threat that's still there and this character. And I think what would help you with that idea is that A, by bringing this arm back, you're initiating movement momentum this way, which would bring the root back a bit, which would help flatten that foot out of a foot roll into a flatter stance. And you could be here. And then it would be a bit more, you know, like you might be here, but the the, the root being further back and this being flatter creates a more balanced pose where it's nicely stabilized over there with a the flat foot. You create distance because, oh, I'm not doing anything. I better get out of here. And then you can still have still your pose of, eh, of, all, of all of that. If that makes sense. This just this feels so locked in terms of I move my arm back that has really no no impact on the posing, the balance. But also, it's the same thing besides like an arm change with some residual, almost almost wobble, jiggle. That doesn't feel, it doesn't quite feel mechanics driven in terms of the balance has changed and the emotion of the character has changed. This feels more like, not random movement. Like it's not like, it's, again, it's not like you're a bad animator. 
Like, I hope that it doesn't come across as, uh, like, you don't know how to animate. This is all feels random. I think it just could be more focused and pushed in terms of, let's make this a very distinct change in terms of here to here where, like I said, we are further back. We can move this character back. It goes away from danger uh, while still maintaining this uh, pose. And it's good that you're higher and lower here because it's, it's technically fairly twinned. But because the diagonal and the offset, there's still enough asymmetry in there. And that's kind of that. Because I think by moving it backwards, you can also rotate the chest a little bit towards the character, which also moves the head a little bit. So there's just an overall change. Like this from I'm fighting, like I'm fighting, I'm looking. But between looking and realizing, oh, that's not working, there's no real change besides the arms. And I, I wish there was a broader pose change that supports this, ah, I guess not, feel. If that makes sense. And that is that. All right. Thanks. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.